Good morning students. Welcome to module 1 of Cell, the Fundamental Unit of Life. In this module, we are going to study about the discovery of cells, cell theory, shape and size of cells, types of cells, that would be eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells. Let's begin with introduction to the cell. All living organisms are made up of a fundamental unit of life called cells. Cells got their name from an Englishman, Robert Hooke. He first saw and named the honeycomb-like tiny structures cells while he was experimenting with a new instrument we now call a microscope. He saw these in a slice of cork which you can see in the picture above. These tiny boxes actually reminded him of plain small rooms that monks used to live in called as cells. The cell actually is a Latin word for a little room which you can see in the picture below honeycomb like structures tiny little rooms called cells. Let's move on to the timeline of discovery about cells. Robert Hooke in 1665 noticed the presence of cells in a cork slice. He was then followed by Anton von Leeuwenhoek in 1680s, to be precise, 1676, he found the presence of living cells in the pond water. Do you know that Leeuwenhoek is also known as father of microbiology? Then in 1831, Robert Brown recognized the existence of tiny dot-like structure in the center of the cell, sometimes in the periphery also, the nucleus. Followed by 1839, Parkinje, who invented the term protoplasm, which is the liquid present in the cell. To be precise, protoplasm is the living component of the cell. Then in year 1838-1839, Shielden and Sean presented the cell theory that all organisms are actually made up of cells. The cell theory actually forms the basis of the biology that we study today. To this cell theory in 1855, Rudolf Virchow actually suggested a little change. Now let's see the visual timeline. 1590, Hans Zacharias Janssen produced the first compound microscope. In 1665, Robert Hooke first called spaces in cork cells. Please remember what he saw was a dead cell. Then in 1680, Anton von Leeuwenhoek observed living cells through simple microscope. Now he was the first one to observe a living cell in a sample of fresh water. Then in 1838, Matthias Schilden and in 1839, Theodor, Theodor Schwann put up their theory called cell theory. Matthias Schilden discovered that the plants are made up of cells and in 1839, Theodor Schwann discovered that the animals are made up of cells. In 1855, Rudolf Virchow actually suggested a little change, a little adjustment in this theory, saying that living cells come from other living cells. So what does the cell theory say? Cell theory says that cells are the basic unit of all life. This means the cells are the smallest things that can be considered living. The second postulate of the cell theory says that all living things are made up of one or more cells. A paramecium is an example of a single cell organism, that is unicellular organism, while a monkey or a cactus can be an example of multicellular organisms which are plants as well as animals. The third postulate says that all cells come from pre-existing cells. This means that the cells and all living things don't just appear out of nowhere. They have to come from other cells. One cell gives rise to two cells. Cells always come from other cells. They make more of their kind. So, moving on, why cell is called a structural unit of life? We have been hearing about this, but why is it so? A cell is actually called a structural unit of life because the body of all the organisms is made up of cells. Now, cells combine to form tissues. 
tissues which further combine to form organs organs combine to form organ systems and these organ systems constitute an organism that is organisms like us human beings or other animals so the cell is the basic structured unit of all unicellular and multicellular organisms then why is a cell a function unit of cell of life or how is a cell a function unit of life it is called a function unit of life because all the functions of the body whether physiological biochemical genetic or any other metabolic functions are carried out by cells itself a cell is an autonomous unit it carries out nutrition respiration excretion transportation reproduction all the living processes that an organism living organism individual organism does in order to survive on its own unicellular organisms on the other hand are capable of independent existence which shows a cell's capability to exist independently and due to this a cell is called fundamental and structural unit of life next is the shape and size of cells also number of cells what do these depend on the shape of the cell actually may or may not be fixed for some cells for example uh, amoeba wbcs do not have a fixed shape while for other cells as you can see in the picture there are many that have fixed shapes now their shape is actually determined by the specific function they perform while the size actually size of the cells may vary from a few micrometers in diameter which will be microscopic to as big as an ostrich's egg number of cells in a body is related to actually the size of the organ or of the body moving on types of the cell now there are just two basic type of cells on the basis of how they are formed they are called prokaryotes prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells now what is a prokaryote or a eukaryote as you can see in the diagram they actually look very different from one another that is because they are designed differently a prokaryotic cell has a prokaryon that is pro means primitive or old or basic karyon means nucleus similarly a eukaryotic cells has a eukaryon u means new or advanced karyon means nucleus so let's compare these two a prokaryotic cell actually has a nuclear region that is poorly developed due to the absence of the nuclear membrane so basically their nucleus does not have a boundary there is so we cannot call it a nucleus that is why this nucleus is not called a true nucleus this nucleus or this nuclear region in a prokaryotic cell is actually called a nucleoid region this nucleoid region also lacks a nucleolus which is supposed to be present inside a nucleus since the nucleus of a prokaryotic cell doesn't have its own membrane how can the cell organelles present inside uh, the cell have their own membranes so there are no membrane bound cell organelles present inside the cell now visually you can see the cell uh, as a very small cell the size of the cell is generally very small that that is about 0.1 to 10 micrometer small common examples of eukaryotic cells is bacteria blue green algae cyanobacteria while eukaryotic cells are the cells that you see that that are the advanced type of cells nuclear region is well developed surrounded by the nuclear membrane membrane brown nucleus is uh, present in the cell that is why it is called a true nucleus now this true nucleus also has a nucleolus it has multiple chromosomes in the inside the nucleus and this cell has membrane bound organelles cell organelles which perform different functions the size of this cell a eukaryotic cell is comparatively much larger it may range from 5 micrometers to 100 micrometers example is cells of plants and animals and humans in 
on screen now is the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cell the visual difference between the two you can see how a nucleoid region looks and how a well-defined nucleus in the eukaryote looks you can also see the comparison between the size and how prokaryotes usually are single celled while eukaryotes are multicellular you can also see that there are no membrane bound organelles seen in this picture and in the eukaryotic cell the membrane bound organelles are present Next we have on screen is a beautifully drawn and well labeled diagram of a prokaryotic cell which is actually a bacterial cell. What you can do is try drawing it in your notebook. With this we come to end of module 1. Happy learning!